there's the jigger. And we've been setting nets for a couple days at Pelican Lake. We're at Pelican Lake now. Camp there and it's getting waterlogged and heavy, iced up, so water leaning up there, drying. When it dries up, I'll do a video of the dimensions for the guys who have been asking me for dimensions of it. Sorry, I can't get it all in the shot here because it's too long and we're too close to it. Yeah, when it dries up a bit, I'll do a video of dimensions of it. It's actually a pretty good one. It goes good. It's kind of the design that we use and works pretty good. All right. Okay. So, for the guys that wanted the video on the dimensions, dimensions of a jigger to set nets with, that's what we're going to do. So here it is, stretched out on top of a couple chairs. I hope the lighting's good because it's dark out, night time. But the wife's not at the cabin with me, so I can do this. Anyhow, you start out with just a nice straight plank. No warps, no twists. It doesn't have to be a new plank. This one is uh, a used plank, actually. I, my brother was changing the deck on his deck at his house, and I grabbed this from him. Actually, my dad did and brought it home, and I grabbed it from my dad. It was a 2 by 10 Plane down, it's, it was an inch and a half by nine and a half inches. But I cut it narrower. A second, I gotta get my tape measure handy here. I cut it to nine inches. I'm just making the shadow here to light. The reason that I cut it to nine inches is so that it would fit in a 10 inch ice auger hole. I have a 10 inch auger, so I only have to drill one hole, or two holes, but it'll fit in that hole. That's why I have it this width. It could have been 9.5 or 10 inches, or it could even be 12 inches wide, or 6 inches, whatever. And it is, oh my measuring tape, don't want to grab on that end, but it's 8 feet long. That's kind of our standard length is 8 feet. So I don't know how that's going to focus. But yeah, it is eight feet long. That's kind of the length we use. Uh, it's a pain in the ass right now when the ice is thick. We have a little over three feet of ice now, and we need a big hole to get it in or up, get it in and out. So it could have been a little shorter. Some people use six footers, or but. That's the length this one is. This is kind of our standard length. This is our design we use. So we'll get on to measurements now. So the plank is eight feet long. So the pin, okay, there's a pin in here. It's just a chunk of rod. I think I think it's three eighths rod. I just drilled holes and pounded it through to hold the steel arm on. But anyhow, from the front of the jigger, it is, let's see if my tape will stay there, oh, I'll go on top, from the front of the jigger, it is 40 inches, drop the camera, okay, not going to be doing any editing, so that'll be on there, but yeah, it's 40 inches to where that pin is, and I'm making the shadow because it's night time, but tape measure when flying down. <clears throat> so 40 inches from the front of the jigger is where you want to drill a hole for the pin. But I should do the other measurements too, I guess. So, okay. So as you can see, there's a narrow slot cut here. So this will be about an inch Past your pin towards the front, you'll want to start your narrow slot for your steel arm to come up. So for your steel arm to be in. And that is just a little bit over 10 inches to the back 
where your main arm slot is. I don't know. I'm not good at giving dimensions, but it's probably like 10 and a quarter inches. If I was doing this in the daylight, it would have been better. Okay, so, and that slot here, because my steel arm is quarter inch material, I think it's five sixteenths, quarter inch or five sixteenths. But this slot is, I have it half an inch wide, because you don't want it tight, because you want your arm, down here, you want your arm to be able to wiggle, just like you can see there. And get out of the shadows okay so that can move because you don't want that too tight or it'll ice up and just be stiff and stick and be a pain so that's why I believe that my steel arm is 5 sixteenths 5 sixteenths steel by inch and a quarter that's what my steel arm is made out of but we'll get to the steel arm in a minute Okay, now, the slot where the wooden arm comes up, that's this slot right here, and I'm standing in the light again, it is two and a half inches wide, maybe a little bit closer, maybe two and five eighths I have, but I must have traced it over two and a half, but then with the saw blade it came out to be two and five eighths, again, it doesn't have to be exact, but just... Roughly, if you want it to be a straight cut, of course, and it is, get my tape measure over here, just bear with me, I have it about 30 inches, a little over 30 inches. make it the end of the slot like 16 and a half inches from the back of the jigger so and it is I, I forget now if I said this yeah it did that it's a little over two inches wide so so 16 and a half inches from the back of the jigger you would cut a a slot two inches or two and a half inches wide by 30 inches you cut this chunk out and have it centered and then you cut this slot and chunk of material out of your board that's what you'll make your wooden arm out of this one here this one your wooden arm the chunk you cut out you'll use for that Okay, so we've got the top. This is the way it's sitting right now. It's sitting right side up. So just picture it floating against the bottom of the ice because that's the way it would be. And okay, well, do skates first before I flip it over. You need to have skates on your jigger. If I get out of the light, I'll find better light. But anyhow, they're pieces of steel. This, these ones are. 1 8 by inch and a half I used just what I had kicking around you know it could be 1 16th or whatever but I've got them see there's two at the front and if you want the measurements they're four inches the start of the skate is four inches from the front of the jigger pretty much four and a half half I guess four and a quarter but you want them both both to be even and uh, since I used inch and a half material they're sticking up a quarter of an inch so they're a quarter of an inch each above the board and of course you want them even from the front on both sides that are exactly across from each other and you also have two at the back here's the one and here's one and the back ones I have They are ten and a half inches. Don't come in the light again. From the back of the jigger to the front of, or to the back of the skate, I guess, is ten and a half inches. 
and they're quarter inch up also if you want them the same height and the jigger actually doesn't ride the board doesn't ride against the ice the skates do and they keep it in line they steer it or hold it straight so it doesn't go roaming all over much like the ski rods do on a snow machine oh and you know like these ones I have them up here but they could be further back if you like the only reason I put them this far up is because get the camera strap out of the way if I'm gonna hit the jigger with the chisel or needle bar or auger it's gonna happen back here and I would rather not hit steel you can see there's marks here from the where I've hit it with the auger and wood chips from hitting with chisel or needle bar taken out so that's why I have these ones up ahead but they could be back further if you want okay so I think we have dimensions pretty well everything on this side so <clears throat> that's how the jigger looks okay well, I accidentally shut it off but the top of the ice would be here or the bottom of the ice I mean and uh, the skates are riding on the ice the bottom of the ice and when the jigger works oh, you have the steel arm which and then the wooden arm floats up because it's wood and it hooks on the ice and when you pull the running line your rope you're actually pulling the steel arm back and when you pull the steel arm back then the wooden arm moves back and it grab it's <coughs> grabbing on the ice and pulling the jigger ahead <coughs> excuse me but, oh, my chairs are falling over anyhow I'm gonna flip this over and uh, we'll measure the steel arm and the holes where the holes are on that and go from there okay so I just flipped it over is all I did to see the bottom side of the jigger <coughs> excuse me but my steel arm length is that's this it's a piece of inch and a quarter I think I said that before and I believe it's 5 16th might be quarter inch mm, it is quarter inch so it's steel now we gave you that dimension so the length of the steel arm is I probably just uh, I need to get a little more tape out so the length of the steel arm is 33 inches but it could be 34 or 36 it's just gonna hang down farther and give you a longer sweep but that's what this one is and then <coughs> the hole where the wooden arm hooks on to where the hole is where the pin goes through the jigger which also is that distance is 14 inches see what I did here oh, I don't know if you can see I'm in the darn light again or whatever but see I have different holes drilled I have actually three there's the top one up here the one that it's in I have it in the middle one and then I drilled another one on the bottom here and that was just to so you could set your arm in different holes where it would maybe work better go faster because uh, speed is like when we're commercial fishing and we're setting 15 20 nets in a day trying to the speed of the jigger is a factor and uh, it works pretty good on the middle hole it's a pretty quick jigger and then see up on the top or what will be the end of the other end of your arm there's a hole drilled to hook your line onto this could be a rope it could be just you know some 3 8 rope or whatever but we use uh clothesline cable just cable plastic coated cable because again it makes the jigger go faster because there's no friction it slides through trying to get a good view of this I should have a flash but it slides through the end eye quicker because there's nothing holding it and all the end 
the eye is. Because you need an eye on the end of your jigger, the back part. <coughs> you can do this. <coughs> Excuse me. Again. I just have a pe little piece of flat iron with a chain link welded on it. I don't know if you can see that, but again, the phone is not screwed with screws. Two screws on each side to the bottom of the jigger and your cable runs through it. Okay, so we did those dimensions. Okay, and a spring, always have a spring on your jigger, it's just a door spring for a screen door to help pull the arm back, because once you start, like our nets are 100 yards long, when you get out 50, 60 yards, if you don't have a spring, it's going to start slowing down, because when the arm drops, it's got to pull all the string, or all the rope for the running line with it, so a spring speeds it up. And the spring hole is just kind of guesstimate, like it's nine inches, wherever, just as long as it's between the wooden arm and your pivot down here. Like, so it's nine inches from here, to the spring hole's nine inches. And then there's other springs, that, the spring's attached, the other end, which just I just have a quick clip. Like these, I don't know what they're called, but... Just so I can unhook it when the jigger's in storage and I'm, I don't have tension on the spring all the time for nothing. So, and then again, same thing, like, it's just, well, the spring's getting stretched now, but when I put this staple in the wood, because that's all it holds this end, is a staple, I just kind of put the arm straight up and down and where the spring came to when it's relaxed, and then just give it a little tension, and that's where I put that in. So we have steel arm dimension so far, the board dimension, so now we'll do the wooden arm. This is the part that floats up, and the end there is what actually digs into the ice. So, this is the chunk of wood that you cut out of that slot. That's where this comes from. Now this, again needs to be loose it can't be tight because it'll stick and see how it can wiggle on there it moves freely up and down with a little so it can wiggle a bit but it is the total length okay i hit pause again but the total length is about 25 inches it looks like yeah it's 25 inches Maybe 25 and a half. And what was this again? Hmm, it was 30, so... i cut this a little shorter. But, I uh, guess, yeah. The reason you want it shorter is... That it's got to... With the steel part, it's got to... Be able to fit through there. So, that's why. And then... There's a little bit of an opening there. But... As you can see, you have to cut a slot in the wooden arm for the steel arm to fit into. So in this case, the slot is the slot was 16 inches, and then I just kind of gouged it out a bit here to help help it fit flat down so and it is a half an inch wide my piece of steel is quarter inch and this is half an inch just to, as I said give it the play and the bolt that goes through it is a 5 16 bolt I believe I have in it but I have a couple flat washers on each side of the steel just so it rides in the washers and not on, on the wood so it's steel on steel and not steel on wood so the next part would be I guess we should talk about or I'll explain is this the part that catches the ice so the end of the arm here this is a 45 degree angle the part that has the ice pick on it or whatever you want to call it 
and it's just a piece of thin steel this is I think I used one looks like I used 1 16th so I could bend it around the 45 degree angle here and then I have another piece welded on it here so it's screwed in here two places and screwed in up here one place and I just wait I'll get the dimensions of that I don't need my tape it doesn't have to be exact like it's this piece is two and a half inches and this piece would be about five inches four and a half inches I bent the tape over so you have to make that and a very important thing about this catcher is that the flat side when you sharpen it because it has to be sharpened that this is straight this side the side that actually is the top of the arm has the bevel this is the side you sharpen so it's like a chisel and it can't slip it when it grabs in the ice now it bites if you had it sharpened the other way it would just slip on the ice just, just like if you use a wood chisel how it slips so you can cut sharp on one side or slip with the other side well that's the same same idea here now it can't slip it bites but if it was sharpened this way if you had the bevel sharpened on this side it would just slip it wouldn't grab into the ice so I don't know what else to uh, to say about it that's that's pretty well the idea of it uh, you know like this is looking at the bottom of side of it if you flip it over it's the actual way I'll flip it over once more so this is the actual way that it's riding on the bottom of the ice so as you can see I don't know if you can see but uh, the back part of the arm here without the shadow there you can see how I got the steel sharpened this is the flat side and this is the sharpened side that's that's very important and uh, yeah that's pretty well it this floats up because it's wood so it'll grab in the ice right there and the steel arm drops there's the steel arm down there when you pull on the running line or your rope we call it a running line then you pull the steel arm back and I don't know if my thing is high enough but there it is but when you pull the steel arm back when you pull the rope the steel arm goes back and this goes uh, like this and that's what pushes the jigger ahead okay I'm gonna drop this down and oh the bevel I have a bevel on the front okay a lot of bottom jiggers the ones we used to buy the bevel would be this way not this way and I've heard the reason being that they made the bevel this way and and still on bottom jiggers it is this way is so that it can go underneath rough ice and it'll go down and go under the ice well if the ice is rough a jigger is not gonna go so even that's a foo uh, I won't say foolish but it's not a good idea what happens when the bevel is this way is that think of uh, a boat or anything uh, if the bevel is this if the bevel is this way when you pump the jigger the front's going to get forced down by the flow of the water it's going to naturally push itself down and what's going to happen is the front of your jigger is going to be bobbing up and down up and down up and down every time you pump it and it'll go crooked and it'll be slow so that is not the way to do it that is I don't know who thought of that idea but you want the bevel to be this way I don't have much of a bevel on this one but this way it holds it up against the ice when you pump it the water gets pushed underneath and the jigger stays up against the ice so yeah putting the bevel this way somebody thought they had a brainy idea but it doesn't work so you want the bevel going this way and it, the board isn't actually riding against the ice anyway the skates are so that's just the bevel this is there's not much of a bevel I don't know what that would be 60 degrees if 60 degrees but just a little bit of a bevel to 
hold the board up when you pump it so it gets pushed up against the ice and not pushed down. Because if the front of the jigger is bobbing up and down, it's going to go everywhere. So There you go. Uh, I don't know if you need any other dimensions or have any questions for the guys that want to try making them. Just let me know and I'll do my best to answer it. Uh, I think I said the pin is, I think it's just a, it's a piece of 516th rod I used. It could have been 3 8 or a quarter inch, whatever. It's a steel arm. Uh, the spring goes up and gets hooked up to pull the, help pull the steel arm down. That's, because this is, if you don't have a spring, just the weight of the steel arm pulls down and when you start getting out quite a ways, it's slower to go down, so the spring just helps it out. It's, it can be used without a spring, but the spring just helps. Uh, just a bolt through there. That's up there. Oh, okay, right here. See how I got that sharpened on each side? That is so that, because it's, it's loose, so if it happens to come on the side, like that, It'll still come up. If you just had a, if you just had this arm cut straight across without the two angles on the sides, if it came up there, it would probably get stuck. So that just helps it come up into the slot. And then I have, oh, get out of the light, Orin. The reason this is slotted out a little wider here is just for this bolt, just so it has room to come up. And not get caught on my can bring it up all the way the chair is sitting but yeah if you didn't have the slot wider up here then the bolt would be getting stuck so it's just slotted out a little bit wider i don't know quarter inch on each side just so there's room for the bolt to come up too so i'll leave it there and any questions i'll try and answer them okay guys thanks for watching Okay, one other thing I just thought of. I don't, the way it is right now, it doesn't make a lot of noise when you're pumping it, so it's hard to find. It will, if you knock it, which is stand it, the, the guy pumping it pulls hard on the rope. When this comes up, it does make a little, like, a little bang sound. Kind of like that. You can hear that, but the arm will be against the ice. At, I'll move it ahead a bit, so. Okay. So that, oh, <laughs> we're having a catastrophe. Chairs are falling over. Anyhow, uh, if, there you go, now it's making lots of banging. But anyhow, now we're at the bottom of the jigger. Okay, I hit pause again by accident. I use a beeper, so I don't need it to be loud. But if you don't have a beeper, where the steel hits the wood right here, that's what makes the noise. Just put a little piece of flat iron or a bolt or whatever right across here. And then it'll be steel hitting on steel. When you, knock, when you pound it, knock it. And that way it'll make lots of noise. Well, that's just a little trick. If you wanted to make noise, uh, otherwise it doesn't make a lot of noise. The bottom ones sometimes do have little knockers at the back here. They're a little gadget that's back here, and they do make a little tick, 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 tick. That can be heard, but a better way is to, and simpler way is just to put a, a little piece of steel across your wooden arm. Just screw it on. A little piece of flat iron right here. And then the steel arm will hit against that steel and it'll make quite a bit more noise. So, just a little idea. Alright.